Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before we get into that, I have to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for the growth of my channel and for all the wonderful things that you say about me in the comments. I really, really do appreciate it. The first item on tonight's agenda is a Prager uh, University video, the title of which is Capitalism or Socialism? Which one is more democratic? And we're going to watch that now. Why is socialism so popular? Less than 10 years ago, you couldn't refer to socialism in a positive way and hope to have a career in American politics. Socialism was referred to as the S word. Now it is affirmed either explicitly or implicitly by just about everyone on the left. And amazingly, given socialism's record of failure, the socialists seem to be gaining ground. Why? What makes socialism so attractive to so many? Socialism, according to its proponents, is more democratic and therefore more moral than capitalism. Leftist filmmaker Michael Moore explains it for us. Democratic socialism means everyone has a seat at the table and everybody gets a slice of the pie. The famed socialist writer Irving Howe wrote something similar in his 1982 autobiography. We believe that the democracy in our political life should also be extended deeply into economic life. The basic idea here is that socialism is vindicated through its roots and popular consent. If a majority of people working through their elected representatives declares something to be a public entitlement, say free college or free health care, then they are justified in extracting resources from those who create wealth to pay for it. As Nathan Robinson argues in his book, Why You Should Be a Socialist, the moral imperative is to place the economy under the control of the people. Sounds good, at least superficially, until you dig a bit below the surface. First, what direct control do the people really have over any government institution? What control do the British people have over the National Health Service? What control do Americans have over the Department of Motor Vehicles or the US Post Office? The answer, of course, is none. Given its practical impossibility, genuine popular control over government institutions is a mirage. Second, what if 51% of Americans vote to confiscate the resources of a single person, say Bill Gates? Does that make it right? Under an authoritarian socialist government, a single dictator seizes the fruits of your labor. Everyone is against that. Under democratic socialism, a majority does. The end result is the same. You've been robbed. The fundamental problem with democratic socialism, however, is its assumption that in a free market system, the economy is not under the control of the people. This is exactly the opposite of how things work. Let me explain. Each of us are not only citizens, we are also consumers. These are overlapping categories. Every citizen is a consumer, and every consumer is also a citizen. The consumer, like the citizen, is a voter. As citizens, we vote once every two or four years, as consumers, we vote many times a day. The citizen votes with a ballot, which costs them nothing except the inconvenience of going to the polls. The consumer votes with his money, which costs him a lot, all the time and effort he put in to earn that money. Only a fraction of citizens are eligible to vote at the ballot box, but every consumer votes in the marketplace, even felons, even children. Illegal aliens cannot vote for political candidates, but they too vote with their money. Moreover, citizens participate in a system of representative democracy. Their views are filtered through the politicians who represent them. Consumers, by contrast, vote in a system of direct democracy. If you prefer an Audi to a Lexus or the Apple iPhone to the Samsung Galaxy, you don't have to elect some other guy to exercise these preferences. You do it directly yourself by paying for them. Here we see the secret of how those billionaires like Jeff Bezos got so rich. We made them rich. The inequality that socialists complain about is the result of popular mandate. Want fewer billionaires? Stop buying their stuff. Free markets work not through <laughs> greed or exploitation, but by satisfying our wants. And the most successful entrepreneurs are those who anticipate our wants even before we have them. No one wrote Steve Jobs asking him to make a phone that took pictures, allowed people to text messages, and listen to music. He conceived it and built it before we knew we couldn't live without it. 
market economies involve a level of popular participation and democratic consent that politics can only envy. We don't need to extend democracy from the political to the economic sphere. We already have it. And the moral grounding of free markets, just like that of our political system, is in the will of the people. In the latter case, a will expressed only on election day. In the former case, a will expressed deliberately, emphatically, constantly. We don't need socialism because we already have something more moral and more democratic. It's called capitalism. I'm Dinesh D'Souza for Prager University. Huh. I have to confess, I have never looked at capitalism that way before. That's an interesting viewpoint. And I think he makes a good point. Um, every socialist system that I'm aware of has a limited amount of goods available, and you have to buy with other citizens just to get things like bread. And in our system, Massive amounts of things are available to us. Things we don't even need are available to us and in quantity. And it's because of capitalism. So that was just a, a different viewpoint and I thought it would be interesting for you to see it. This next thing that I have on the agenda is a Twitter post. <clears throat> And it, I'm not going to put it up on the screen because you can watch it yourself. I'll give you the links in the description. But uh, some FBI agents went to question a woman in Oklahoma about her Facebook posts. And she stood her ground and basically made them leave. I just thought it was really strange that FBI agents are investigating American citizens about what they're posting on Facebook. And she brought it up several times. Do I not have a First Amendment right to say what I want? So I thought that was an interesting one that you might want to... There, there's a video that she took, and you can watch that on the link that I send you. The next article I have is European officials are weaponizing their intelligence services to censor political enemies. This is a Substack article. And it's an interesting article because... What struck me about it was there, that all the European countries are talking about Russian disinformation coming into the marketplace and disrupting elections. And, and that's something that really bothers me to hear because that's what we heard in 2020 and it all turned out to be an absolute lie. And so I have trouble believing that it's now true when it was a lie just four years ago. So that's an interesting article for you to read. You'll be surprised by how many countries are saying this, even countries that you wouldn't expect to. And then lastly is an article from uh, Peter Sweden uh, on Substack, the title of which is, It Has Begun. Italy is investigating COVID vaccine death. There was an 18-year-old girl who got the COVID vaccine and died within a few weeks. And now they're investigating and they say that they're going to hold the doctors or they're, they're trying to hold the doctors accountable. I don't know if that's the right approach. I mean, I think they should hold the, the uh, pharmaceutical companies accountable for these vaccines, but that's just me. But anyway, all these links will be in the description and you can read them yourself. And I always pray for you. At the end of every video, I do that. I thank God that you will have an abundant life and that you will live a long time and that you'll be healthy and that God will keep you safe from harm. And I pray that God will do the same for every person that you love. But I pray most of all that you'll be anxious for nothing. But in all things, through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you'll let your request be made known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and, ch and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.